welcome to this demonstration where we will show you how the Prediction app can communicate directly with CHAP Core to produce and visualize predictive forecasts for climate sensitive diseases in DHIS2. For this demonstration, we've already set up the CHAP Core as a back end server and configured the DHIS2 root API. Please note that the minimum requirement for your DHIS2 version is 2.41 and that you need administrator privileges to install and configure the Prediction app. The Prediction app is divided into two main sections. The first section is for making predictions, and the second is for visualizing those predictions. In today's demonstration, we will provide a prediction for malaria incidents in two provinces in Rwanda, namely East and Kigali City, for the next three months. Please be aware that the data used in this demo is fictional. To create a new prediction, we first need to train a model. We begin by selecting the model we want to use. For this demonstration, we'll use the CHAP Ewers Monthly Model. This model is developed by the CHAP, but it is inspired by the Ewers Predictive Model developed by the World Health Organization. The type of data this model requires will then be displayed. The selected model requires population data. Let's find the population data element. Next, we select the DHIS2 data element, where we have stored the malaria incidents. Additionally, the model requires climate data. For this demo, we'll use the default setting, which instructs CHAP Core to fetch data from the ERA5 land dataset via Google Earth Engine. We'll leave this switch as is. Next, we select the organization units. We choose East and Kigali City. For the organization unit level, we keep it at the district level. Now, let's select the period for training. Training data, in this context, refers to the data that the model will use to identify the connection between the disease and climate data. We will choose all the years for which we have registered malaria data. Due to limited data availability during COVID-19, we will exclude the years 2020 and 2021 as missing data could confuse the model's training process. We have now chosen the model, the required data for this model, the area, and the training period. Next, we send this data to CHAPCOR to generate a prediction for the upcoming three months. We have now moved on to the second page, where the status of our prediction is displayed. The model is currently training and making predictions based on the provided data. This process typically takes three to five minutes, depending on the amount of data. As we can see, CHAPCORE has completed the training and prediction phase. We can now proceed to import the latest predictions into DHIS2. On the third page, we can import the latest predictions. The chart provides an overview of the data we are about to import into DHIS2, displaying the regions you selected in the first step and the corresponding data to be imported. The chart illustrates the model's predictions for the number of malaria cases over the coming months. In October, the model predicts between 27,000 and 30,000 cases in the province of East. The blue line shows the most likely scenario, corresponding to the median between the upper and lower estimates. For the following month, the blue line rises, indicating an increase in predicted malaria cases. It's also important to note that the range of uncertainty grows, shown by a larger gap between the lowest and highest predicted numbers. By December, the model predicts an even higher number of cases, along with increased uncertainty. This is typical for any predictive model, like a weather forecast, for example. The further in the future you look, the less certain the prediction is, but it can still give you an indication of the expected trend. Next, we need to specify which data element the predictions will be imported into. Since we already have a data element that accepts prediction data, the prediction app selects it automatically. If you have not yet created a data element for this purpose, you can click on Add Data Elements and follow the provided instructions. 
Finally, click on Import Predictions to complete the import process. Soon, new visualization techniques will be integrated into the visualization section of the prediction app. We have now demonstrated how the prediction app communicates with CHAP Core to produce predictive forecasts in DHIS2. We hope this has provided you with a clearer understanding of the purpose and functionality of the prediction app. Thank you for watching. You can learn more and download the prediction app on our website.